Okie dokie. I have pushed buttons, but there we go. You are live. Okay, hello out there. <laughs> Today is a basic and practical teaching on Green Tara. Last night, we did Vajrasattva. That was for problems that feel internal. Your doubts, your anxieties that don't feel attached to anything, your cricks and funky bits. That's for cleaning out problems that feel as if they were inside. Now, Tara is for problems that feel as if they are outside. Poverty, job issues, fertility issues, either too fertile or not fertile enough. All of those issues that appear to be external, the shit that happens, storm issues, flood issues, police issues, that's where we use Tara. Green Tara is your base. She started out back in the Dravidian times, before the Aryans invaded India and set up Hinduism back when it was uh, the basic natural Indian land spirit stuff as Mother Nature. And you'll see her run through almost every culture with a Mother Nature. The Druids will have one, the Wiccas will have one. I'm sure the Yoruba has one, an equivalent of that. I may not know quite what it is, but there is one that is Mother Nature the female side of the forest spirit. She is a personification of that. Her mother is Amitabha, which we were doing this morning as part of the wake. Therefore, although her seed syllable is Tom, she is born from a Hri. This means she is a manifestation of the balance of yin and yang energy, the yang energy of bodhicitta and the yin energy of openness, the yang energy of creativity and the yin energy of the spaciousness in which to create. When your life is too full of crap, you can't work your creativity. When your apartment is too full of crap, you can't paint because you can't find where you put your good brush. So it needs a spaciousness for your creativity to blossom. Your creativity can't function without the spaciousness. But when that spaciousness lacks the element of creativity, it's just a big dead old nothing. It needs that creativity to enliven it. This is the union of yin and yang. Tara is not seen with a consort because she, he, it is complete in and of itself. Total balance of yin and yang. Its own consort. Chuku kundu gombo Dorji sampa garab dorji dang. Shere singe bardu shin lab de de da ma zan tu sun chi zog chen ju pe la ma la sol wa de ergin pe ma ju ni la sol wa de dor ji chang chi te lo na ro dang mar pa mi la gom po sa sa pa. Na pupadang pal den drupa su kagyu lama nam la sol wa deb o chen lama nam la sol wa deb ru chen lama nam la sol wa deb kagin wari lama nam la sol wa deb. Shakya lama nam la sol wa deb. Nyan du dang yun trin lama nam la sol wa 
Hodeb. Falcon du jong dung yer me pa. Gun garab du jijin trak pa. Niti dung ni su me pa. Palamanam chi tin ti. chong. Tara does not come in only green. She comes in every color. Just as you all change your clothes depending on whether you're going to a rave or working in the garden, whether you're going out dancing or digging with a shovel. So depending on what she's working on, she changes her colors. And the different colors relate to different aspects of the mandala. We are a mandala in a mandala. Our body is a mandala like the inner body, inner mandala. Saji puki juhuk shing mi tog tram. Ri rab, damn the arthritis. Ling ji nihi de gyan padi. Your spinal cord is the mountain in the min middle, Mount Rirab. Your eyes are the sun and the moon. The flesh of your body and your skin is the flower strewn ground. You are the mandala, and you exist in a mandala of the central and cardinal directions. And in that outer mandala, I'm teaching you the magic of how to do this, you have the different directions with their colors. To the west is red. Red is passion. Red is compassion. Red is love and red is loneliness and the need to be seen, heard, and loved inequivocally. That need, we all feel it. That need for interaction, interrelationship, that urge to truly merge with another or some others, to have a tribe, to have homies. This is the Western direction. When completely purified, it arises as the real bodhisattva, not the, I would like to be a bodhisattva. I will act for the sake of all sentient beings, where you're separating the I and the them. But the real bodhisattva, where you dance instinctively, automatically, and without the sense of doing, doer, or done, in the mandala of responsiveness together with all life. That's the real bodhisattva, the real bodhisattva. So that invokes from the red of the western direction. Now green is the northern direction. Competence and efficiency when it's clarified. It gets done what needs to be done effortlessly. This is the green, the blue-green color. So when we work with green Tara, that is her main aspect. She gets done what needs to be done. When we work with Amitabha, we're looking at the energy of the life force of the universe from which green Tara is born. When we look at white Tara, it is the clarity, the mirror-like wisdom of clarity beyond self and other, which sees clearly all phenomena without judgment. This was Vajrasattva, white of the western direction that we worked with last night. And when we work with the southern direction, the golden color, we work with the richness of texture and creativity. When this is twisted and twerked by your individual hopes and fears and your self-aggrandizement and your self-focusedness, it comes out as a sense of lack, poverty, and avarice, where you can never have enough something, like my surface area issues. <laughs> Whatever yours is, money, love, status, beauty, wealth, everybody's got something and you struggle for it, and you cause yourself harm. You actually do yourself a mischief trying to catch it. You know, the old joke about you can't be thin enough and blonde enough. 
And people really fight themselves with this joke and fight their natural state, which is beautiful in perfect relaxation. Don't worry, eventually it'll all go white and you're blonde enough. I don't care where it started. And when you're dead and you rot, your skeleton's thin enough. Between now and then, it's not worth worrying about. <laughs> this is the yellow direction. I want, I want, and I want another one. And could I have some more, please? This is the piece of chocolate cake sitting on the plate in front of you with the cake in the middle of the table, the rest of it, and a piece in your mouth and a piece on your fork waiting its turn to fit into your mouth. And you're looking at the cake on the middle of the table and wondering how many people you're gonna have to share it with. You're not tasting the one that's in your mouth. That's your twisted southern direction. Your central direction, if you could relax into it, would simply be a wide open vastness that permits all the other elements to play naturally together. But because we fight it, we fight it with to-do lists. We fight it with what we want, what we want to become, what we want to get, what we fear might happen, what we fear we might get, fear of homelessness, uh, desire to have your house perfect and be house proud and get some more stuff and stuff and this goes here and maybe a painting over there. See that one? So you're fighting the natural relaxation of the central direction and that turns into this sludgy depression. How many of you have ever had a depression lasting anywhere from a day to a year? Yeah. If they go more than three months without a let up, they're considered clinical and you take something for it because if it lasts for three months, it cacks your brain chems and then you gotta take something to help it. And depending, you can use psilocybin or antidepressants, both of which need to be done with a professional who knows how to show you how to use it to that purpose. Just to slow down a bit for the translators today. Ah, yes, thank today you. Today we also have Russians. We have Russian translation. Okay, they need me to slow down because the language doesn't quite sync. So, understanding this mandala, which is inside and outside, gives you access to the context, come in and sit down, be relaxed, of green Tara. So that when you work her magic, it works more easily. You want to bring these flowers up and put them in front of the table or wherever you can find room? They're gorgeous. How many of you have problems? <laughs> problems. <laughs> How many of you have problems that feel like they're outside? They could be an employment problem, a stupid boss. Uh, you know, those problems that feel like it's not gonna wash out of your channels, it's not in your channels, it's happening in the outer mandala. So that's what Tara is best for. Remember, she arises out of the absolute bodhisattva of Amitabha. We worked with death this morning, we did a wake. It was beautiful. I have something involving Amitabha only for those of you who want it. Don't take it if you don't want it. It's a magic text from my teacher. If someone is dying, this can include your dog, your cat, or the roadkill that you have come upon. If you wrap this text in pretty cloth, and you circle it around the top of the head clockwise three times. I may be doing this backwards because it's my own head. Yes, like this. And then you bonk the crown chakra. Just a quick thwap. Doesn't have to be hard. It will automatically shift them into the western direction and the pure land of Amitabha. Now, the Pure Land of Amitabha has levels. 
There's solid levels where you get born in a lotus and you have a body. Interestingly enough, it's one of the genderless pure lands. Doesn't have male and female, only one. Doesn't have, because it doesn't birth babies as we do. Babies are born in lotuses. So it's not a, if you really like sex, it's not the one you want. If you really are into being strongly one gender or another, it's not the one you want, because you won't have that there. But if you don't mind letting go of all the conflicts that arise out of gender, feminism, descriptions of who you're supposed to be according to your gender, not fitting it, trying to figure out whether you're trans or non-binary or this or that, none of that happens there. Everybody's non-binary. There's only one non-binary gender there. So it's a nice rest. If you do this for someone, they have one single opportunity to choose in the bardo to choose this pure line. It's the easiest one to get into. You have to have actually actualized by realization the real bodhisattva, bodhisattva in order to get into the others. You have to at least have a sense of lack of self-separation from the all, and not just the sense you get on ayahuasca, or uh, entolito, or the other power drugs, but a sense that's there when you're not taking something, the kind that doesn't wear off. That's for most pure lands, such as Guru Rinpoche's pure land, such as Tushita, and others. But this one, you don't have to have that. You can get it there. Those of you who are interested in having one of these magical texts, who wants one? Would you come and pass some of these out only to those who want one? If you don't feel like it's something you're going to use or need, then don't take one. They'll be around. You can get them another time. What you're supposed to do is wrap it in pretty cloth, what you think is pretty, and place it on your altar for when death is occurring, yours or someone else's. OK, I have more. Victoria didn't make it here, did she? OK, because she was going to also take some and distributed them by um, email from here. To your right. If you don't feel at this time that it's your path to have and use one of these, then don't take one. You can always ask for it later if you do decide or change your mind. Better that than you just take it home and lose it in a great mass of papers wandering around your apartment. It's in Tibetan because it's magic. You don't have to know what it says. Just use the magic of it. You say the Omami Dewa Sri mantra that we were using this morning. Do you all know that mantra? Repeat after me, I give you the lung. Om. Om. Ami. Ami. Dewa. Dewa. Pri. Pri. Om Ami. Om Ami. Dewa Ri. Dewa Ri. Om Ami Dewa Ri. Om Ami Dewa Ri. And you sing it. There's different ways you can sing it. Will you sing the tune I showed you this morning while I do the um, short one? And who else was here this morning? Would you do the tune uh, that they were doing this morning? Do you remember it? You stop, when you stop running, you say it. What? When you stop running, you say it. No, I want you all doing different ones. Okay. So the tune we were doing this morning from the stage. Oh, mommy, they were Oh, mommy, they were oh, How were they doing it? Okay, some of you do that one. Oh, mommy, they were Oh, mommy, they were You do the one I taught you. Oh, 
আমি দে You keep doing the other one. Oh, mommy, worry. You do that loud. Oh, mommy, don't worry. 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 You see how it is when everyone is doing it in different tunes, but it harmonizes. She has the voice to do that when I can't. I'm too froggy. So this is the mother, the pama. Uh, in English, we can't say a neutral word that means parent. In Tibetan, it's pama. So this is the pama of Green Tara. This is what gives birth to her, this energy of Bodhisattva. She is born, she is manifest as the original feminist, the one who stood up. You've noticed Tibetan Dharma is pretty guy-centric. In fact, they say that women are a lower rebirth, most of them, except for the ones that aren't. They told me that real early on. <laughs> Immediately, I said, well, how can you tell which is which? And the Lama I was talking to said, oh, don't worry, dear, they tell you. <laughs> I look him right in the eye and go, I'm not a lower rebirth. He said, I didn't think you were. And we went on with the teachings, and they treated me like a person. They didn't treat all the women that way. Just the ones that stood up and said, I'm not a lower rebirth. But they expect you to tell them that. So if you start acting all humble around Tibetans and you're a girl, they'll figure you're a lower rebirth. You would know. So stand up, chin up, tits to the wind. Stand and practice. So Tara was the original. Tara was a really good yogini. Princess become a yogini. That's the standard archetype story. She had everything, and she chucked it to look for something beyond the beyond. And the Lama said to her, how wonderful that you're practicing so well. You can pray to reborn, be reborn as a man and get enlightened that way. And Tara said, <laughs> nah, I think I'll do it as a woman, just to show you I can. And so she did. That's a short version. But that's the energy. So she is not pure yin, not pure receptive. She's also when necessary. She comes in a deep, dark blue black as well, where she beats things up. That's a wrathful aspect. We're green taro we're working on today, but I would like to introduce you at some point to all 21 of her changes of clothes. Like you, she likes to change her clothes, depending on what she's doing. So if you could change your skin color to, say, a beautiful blue to go with uh, another blue dress, would you not? You change your hair color like that from time to time. Would you not have a few extra arms if you were doing something like uh, raising a baby? You need them. So being a powerful archetype, she gets to change her color from red to yellow to blue, not just her hair color. She gets to change her body from six arms to two arms to stand up and to sit down. So in her 21 forms, you see examples of this. But the green one, green Tara, whose mantra is Om Tare, Tu Tare Ture Soha. She's the one that most people call on. She is the one, where'd it go? Yeah. 
Here's a really nice picture of her in the right color. Verdigris copper. Yes, but that's very green. I'm looking at the color. Tara is, now we're doing Kriya today. In Kriya Tantra, you see the archetype as outside of you so that it can do things you think you can't. This is before you learn not to think you can't. You use Kriya Tantra. Once you've learned not to reify yourself as something that's not perfect, once you have developed the skill of that, you can do the higher tantras, and you can be Tara. But we start with taking her as a goddess in Kriya Tantra, because we're not ready to see ourselves. in our pure Buddha nature. You will be. Give it a little time, a little practice. Some of you might be. In which case, there are longer and more Mahanatara sadras, sadhanas for this. So to begin with, to start, the lung for the mantra. Om. Om. Tare. Tare. Tutare. Tutare. Ture. Ture. Soha. Soha. Om Tare. Om Tare. Tutare. Tutare. Ture Soha. Ture Soha. Om Tare Tutare Ture Soha. Om Tare Tutare Ture Soha. There are on YouTube some people with beautiful voices singing this mantra in different tunes. Better you learn it from them than me, who's just going to croak and, and sound like a frog. I lost my spot here. Here's that picture of a lake that I said I would show you that's the perfect color. Oh, where is that lake? It's up in Tibet. Doesn't say on my images. So this is Kriya Tantra. If you will be practicing Tara, which is quite unnecessary if you don't have any problems, it's only for people when they have problems. <laughs> if you will be practicing Tantra, I recommend you get yourself a printout of green Tara that pleases you. Go Google Green Tara images. You'll get a lot to choose from. Print it out. If it's an original work of art, go make Donna to the artist if you can find them. Dharma is never bought or sold. So if you download something that's useful, see if you are a translation, an artist, make an offering to whoever translated it or whoever painted it. That's how they can live. Because you're really not supposed to sell this stuff. Do you all have a copy of the sadhana?
we can talk about the magic of Tara and the magic of Tantra for long and long. in here. I had it. hate when I lose my spot in this iPad. She protects you from elephants and lions, from fires and floods. Each of these has an outer phenomena but also an inner. Elephants are very wise. They have complex communication between them. So she protects you from relying entirely on your intellect. Lions are full of pride. They think only of themselves. They have no compassion for their food. She protects you from self-focusedness. Floods are the overrun of emotions. She protects you from being overrun by your emotions so that you can't figure out how to move within the situation. When you are frozen by fear, you can't run and get away. You can be overwhelmed by feelings such that you cannot function in a situation. She protects you from that. This northern direction of the green color is truly going to show you the final manifestation when you go into it far enough of the not doing of pure responsiveness without separation. The highest level of Zogchen. Gomme. That is how she is able to be there for each thing and each problem that seems horribly complex to us who are involved like the argument in the sandbox between a couple of three-year-olds, seems rather simple to Mama, who takes them apart and finds another bulldozer for the other one. So it's very simple for her to solve your problems from that aspect of not having a pony in the race. Do you understand what I'm pointing at here? So when you move into the higher levels of Maha and Atara, and you are Tara, your problems dissolve because you no longer have a pony in the race. Not you are outside of yourself, but you are so fully inside of yourself as the mandala that there is no one to fight against no thing. And the automatic, uh, spontaneous responsiveness of the dance of the play of the Dharmakaya arises in its Nirmanakaya form in absolute perfection. Did you catch any of that, the feel of it? 
That's the feeling behind this. When you practice, it's not just about the seeing and the saying. Feel it. Feel the letting go of the grabby shoviness with which you normally approach problems. Release them so that they can settle into their natural state, which is non-problematic. Shall we try it together? So starting on the first page, I've given you the mantra Om Tare Tutare Turi Soha. Say it with me a little. Om Tare Tutare Turi Soha. 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 One group of you do that. The next one, follow me if you can in the song. Give it a try. I'm off key. I'm sorry. Om Dare Tu Tare Tu Re Soha Om Dare Tu Tare See her in front of you. Her raised hand suppresses, puts down that which would injure you, dampens the flames of the fire, puts down the floodwaters suppresses the elephants and lions. Her other hand brings forth a showering of blessings which fill every niche of you that was missing something, leaving complete satisfaction behind. See her in front of you, up, like there, and made of light crystalline, transparent. Jeweled Amitabha is the head on the front of her crown, her pama, bodhisattva itself, that loving nature. Om Gita Deng Dogu With Om the Jewel of Liberation, that would, could be wished for, all that could be wished for is bestowed. Om is form, with all the form that one might want. Houses, children, art supplies, instruments, loving friends, a tribe, Feel the form that you might want being bestowed, filling the gaps where you feel a lack. Padang yang so kalpe zhang po. With the excellence of splendor, prosperity, and the like, sing the Tibetan with me. It's in phonetics. Si jir mende san we sum you bring healing to existence and peace, mistress of the three secrets. <laughs> Noble mother of perfect generosity, to you I pay homage. Tare to Kirin Chendru. With Tare, the precious vessel of Bodhisattva, Kor Wang in Song Dung You constantly liberate living beings who are in number extensive as space, 
vast as the stars in the sky, infinite and forever. Kanyam ye chintak do drol away. From the ocean of suffering in cyclic existence and the lower realms, the lands of want and hopelessness, the lands of hope and fear, the lands of ethereal satisfaction that is always lost. Jetsundo ma yamla dudo. Noble mother, mother Tara, to you I pay homage. To Tare jin love dudse. With Tutare, the ambrosia of blessings. Chik che gupe tsedung selne. Banishes the tormenting heat of fear and misery, all this despair in the dark of the night where you know you'll never make it. You'll never be enough. You know that one. Banished, all gone as if it never was. The dreams of last night vanished in the morning sun. Pende pemogi parzipi and causes the lotus of benefit and well being to bloom. The lotus nourished in the muck at the bottom of the pond, blooming katak, primordially pure and pristine above the waters. You, nourished by the glitches you have walked through, your personality has become as it is from your traumas that you have overcome. Celebrate it. It is perfect and sufficient in and of itself. Nothing lacks. This is the blessings of Tara. You do not lack. To you, mother who protects from distress, I pay homage. Ture, suddenly, now, this now, every now, the instant I remember you, venerable one. Ture refers to every now as it is a now without past and future, the individual moment. This one, this one, yeah, this one too, as it is, but not those. Right now, in each here and now, as it passes the moment, Ture. Gang du tendang kyoikope. <laughs> with your display of attributes and forms to tame beings as is appropriate and needed. Some of us can get a little out of hand sometimes in the sandbox, putting sand in the pretty girl's hair because you like her. We're stupid when we're little. And mama takes you both up and shakes you off and dusts you off and puts you back. We are in the sandbox. We play with each other. And Tara has the ability, when you get a little over enthusiastic or a little too drunk, to settle you down and say, OK, sit down for a minute, drink some water. This is going to hurt in the morning if you don't. Can you feel that energy as if you are a toddler? prone to off yourself as toddlers are if no one keeps an eye on you. And Tara is the ever aware perfect mother, shaking you off when you make an error, pulling someone who's bullying you out of the picture, keeping it playful. Mm 
ดักเทปังพัดเป็นเลสงเวย You protect against all misfortunes of belief in a self. <coughs> We are s e l f e r for a couple of hours to think only outside of yourself, not of yourself. Just try it. When you find yourself thinking, you hear a fart and was that me? No, no, that was a tree groaning. Change it. Think outside of yourself. You can't be embarrassed when you're not self-focused. So go ahead. Look outward. Look at the people you meet, at the bugs on the flowers, at the clouds in the sky. Try it for an hour or two this afternoon. Not even once thinking about whether you're doing it right. Dare you? Give it a try. That's the gift of Tara. The loss of the self-focusedness that causes all forms of embarrassment and self-diminishment. Tuk c h e n y o b a y u m la du do. I pay homage to you. Compassionate and swift mother. Thing about Tara is she solves the problems in the now, not tomorrow. She dissolves them in the now by a slight twist of view. They become not problems but game elements. Any of you like video games? They're supposed to have challenges in them, aren't they? If the video game were your reality, those would be called problems. Let Tara help you with that. So ha trin le z o k t i n trin ji. So ha, so be it. Beautiful clouds of enlightened activity. Geleg nor b u d u c h a r b i p i raining down jewels of that does not say virtue and goodness of openness and inherent perfection manifestation. Our concept of good and bad, of virtue and sin. Do not belong in this sadhana. There is no sin. There is only stress. That which causes added stress and that which is a response to stress, which is digpa. And there is open-hearted, open-minded relaxation, which is gewa. Sometimes they translate it as virtue and sin, but. That's Christian, and you get all sorts of weird connotations in there when you use those translations. For example, Tibetans do not see anything wrong with sex unless you're an ordained monk. This causes many cultural problems between Tibetan lamas and Western women. They just don't see it as a problem. It's just sex. But with our Judeo-Christian background, where sex is. A sin, outside of wedlock, or in this circumstance, or in that circumstance, we get all twerked up around it. Got to train those Tibetan lamas to know this. I really trip it over us Western chicks. Not me, because I'm a guy, but. And have a Tibetan attitude towards it. Come s u m d r o k u n u j i n s o l w a y that bring relief to all beings of the three realms: the realms of form, the realms of desire, and the realms of formless. This is the realms of form is all the solid stuff. Realms of desire is the general god realms. Like the Greek gods and Norse gods and 
all of those um, powerful dancers that can manifest and do things. They're just like people, only they got some attributes. And the formless realms has no form, no shape. Nothing happens. You don't want to get stuck there. It's really boring. Yijin korlo yumla nudo. I pay homage to you, mother wish of the wish fulfilling wheel. When you take the wheel of rebirth, and it is normally a cause for suffering. But you shift only your point of view, the angle from which you're looking at it. It is also a cause of joy. What is the difference? Whether or not you're suffering from a self-preservation instinct or not. Whether or not you're scrabbling to survive it. Or going wee on the roller coaster. In brief to you, the embodiment of primordial wisdom, Yishi. My Tibetan name is Yishi Ketu. Primordial wisdom can talk. <laughs> Very simple name. Given to me way back when I first take, took refuge 50 some odd years ago. Never did take on another one, just kept that one, it seemed suitable. Primordial wisdom is beyond concept. It has no words. And yet, it is the unborn undying, the Buddha aspect of your own inner heart, your own perfect self that is utterly unfuck upable, and the overlay of being a black dog in someone else's dream comes and goes without affecting that one wit. You, in your innate, enlightened nature, which has always been there and always will be. Nothing to be good enough to get. Nothing to scrabble for. Nothing to escape from. Sorry, I can only teach in the context of Zogchen. It's just the way it comes out, even if it's Tantra. All the victorious ones and their spiritual hairs. This is all the teachers, all the Buddhas of the fourth time, including you in your moment of enlightenment, some when, somewhere in the fullness of time. Yeah, you too. All the victorious ones. Ning neg you pay so wa debe to noble lady, I pray with heartfelt devotion. Chang chu bardu yesu jokshik. Take care of me until I notice my own enlightenment. Dam chu dru pe gyal ken jijang. Pacify all circumstances that prevent the accomplishment of the sacred dharma. Say so, Paljorik Dangzi Wei, and grant your blessings so that with long life, merit, splendor, knowledge, and love. All favorable conditions in abundance. I may accomplish the twofold benefit for myself and others. dog 
Sala go If you prefer to keep your sadhana as an electronic copy, you can find this on Lotsawa House and download it electronically to your iBooks. I give out hard copy because it's easier for people to work with in the moment. Not everybody brings an iPad or a, a phone or something they can do this with to all the teachings. That is your green Tara sadhana. How does it feel? Is there happening here any green Tara practice? Is there a day when it happens? No, not here at La. Anybody for a problem solving weeknight as a coven? <laughs> Nobody interested? Let me see as whether people want to get together on a weeknight so that they can synergistically uh, remove problems using this sadhana. What weeknights are open? Okay. Check the schedule here because it would be nice to do it here. And I don't think that the uh, morning guys are in in the evening. How many people would be interested in a weeknight to do this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I will come while I'm here for the next two months if it's here. I might not make it all the way down to Tibet House. So if seven people are interested, we'll usually have four or five show up, because shit happens on a given week. Sometimes your problem eats you, and you don't get here to solve it. And then it's still around. Yes? It might be a Saturday night. It might be a Saturday night. Or Saturday morning. So aren't Saturday mornings taken? Not here. Okay. Okay, Saturday night or Saturday morning, no weeknights left. And is there any Tara already happening? It's a good one to have happening. And when you do it as a group, it synergizes. It's like why we make covens in Wiccan. Because you get more bang for your buck of the amount of energy you put into the ceremony when you've got a dozen or so people do it. But even five will synergize. Saturday's all that's open. Most people don't want to give up their Saturday night. Not a good time. Hmm. Is it possible to piggyback with the Vajrasattva on Friday? How long is the Vajrasattva? You can get through it in 45 minutes. So, an hour. I don't know, guys, would that work for y'all? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else who had their hand up have an opinion about Fridays? Well, what did it just take? Anybody notice the time? Less than an hour. Less than an hour. Yeah. Half an hour probably closer to half an hour. So Vajrasattva gets the inner problems out. So it would really go well together. And then this gets the one that feels like they're outside off. Do you guys want to set that up? Shall we try it uh, next week and see? What am I teaching at Tibet House next week? Oh, what time? Friday night, five to seven. I think it's three words, is it? Yeah. yeah. Three words of Garib Dorji. Okay, so I'm going to miss that because it's going to hang over and there's going to be questions. Yeah. Or there should be. People usually no, like no questions. No one will be here next Friday. The people that run Vajra Sattva will be with you. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, and Lena, are we complete for the online portion? No. And, no. Okay. No, we're going to do Q&A next. People who uh -huh. may have questions about how this works how to do that, Excellent. anything that may have come up either out there or here. Okay. 
This is, I'm teaching this weekend, basic Tantra magic, basic Tibetan magic, how to work it, what to use to work it, what symbols you're going to need. It's really nice. Yes, we're going to do Guru Rinpoche tomorrow, Dorit, to have a Dorjian bell for Vajrasattva, because that sadhana has mudra work, just part of learning the magic, the gestures that make the magic. I can also, with Tara, how many of you enjoy window shopping? So a date one day to go out window shopping together and I'll show you a Tara practice you do while window shopping. <laughs> going and looking at clothes. There's a practice that you do with it that get, creates a whole lot of gewa. There's a lot of fun practices out there to work the magic. The magic itself is based on gewa and digpa. The, all the magic of these sadhanas release into gewa. They unravel the cramp of digpa. Your negativity is held both in your body and in your personality memories as a cramp. When using one method or other, that is released. feels really good and gewa arises gewa is any action which leads to openness relaxation vastness <coughs> happiness and joy not just for you but permeating the inner and outer mandala yes kicking the dog when you're pissed off makes you happy feel release. Your anger is released, but the dog doesn't feel that, and it's part of your mandala. What you want to look for is things that do the release, permeating the mandala for Gewa. So when you give somebody a smile when they're having a bad day, sometimes it'll cheer them up. Sometimes like, what the fuck are you looking at? And then you can't do anything for them. They're just going to have their bad day until they're done. But sometimes it'll create a little gewa. You get the feel of these two? When you do these sadhanas, especially in a group, you come together and create a level of gewa that you can't quite do alone. You unravel the digpas that are bugging you with Vajrasattva, the inner ones, with Tara, the outer ones. And I put those two words in quotes because inner and outer aren't as real as you think they are. But around here, it sure feels like there's inner and outer, so you might as well go with those terms. Other questions before we conclude? Yeah? Yes, they could be seen that way. Uh, the formless realm is more like Dharmakaya. The realms of form, or rather the realms of, uh, let's see, desire, form, and uh, formless. So the realms of form, the gods, I think I said it backwards earlier, sorry about that. The realms of form and the gods could be equivalent to Sambhogakaya. And the uh, realms of desire, which is where we are, always chasing and running from something, is equivalent to Nirmanakaya. It's just a change of the point of view. It's all just a change of your point of view. Namely, you let go of the point aspect of view. 
Other questions? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can do that too. When you didn't have the paper in front of you? <laughs> On your way somewhere while taking a walk or driving, seeing a big bad traffic uh, mess up and being caught behind it? Yeah, this might help. It's all just practicals. It's nice when you do the long one that you do the mantra sum first and then do the recitation. Okay. How long, how much mantra, that's up to you. And play with the tune. Have I got any musicians in here? So please write new tunes for the mantras. Tibetans do it all the time. One year, we have these beautiful mountain people that come down um, for New Year's to the lake, and they circumnambulate the lake in the mist of early dawn, singing these different mantras, manis and Tara mantra and things, in these beautiful ethereal voices, uh, mostly the women, and chanting and walking around the lake, and it's really amazing. One day, one of them found a children's push toy that played happy birthday to you, and we were serenaded by these gorgeous ethereal mountain people's voices singing oh many pad me hung ri oh many pad me hung ri oh many pad me hung ri that was the year's tune so people be creative make your own sing it beautifully bring it to the ceremony and sing your tune while everyone sings their own we don't have to do it in tandem when we do mantra. When we do the prayers, yes, but the mantra, it's supposed to be everybody all over the place with their own tune. Yes? Is the visualization thing for outside of you? Yes. And that's it for her? Uh, there's multicolor rainbow light blessings coming out of her lower hand, and her upper hand is pushing down on the problematic issues. She's getting rid of them, pushing them, suppressing them. That's actually, she's suppressing the demons that bother you and sending you all the blessings of Gewa. Just light out of her hands. Yes, Tara is outside of yourself during this one. Am I understanding correctly that she's also representative of what can be one Yes. Okay. They're all in there. I brought the text, but I don't think I'm going to teach it today. It'll just complicate matters some other time. And that's just all the different aspects. Um, I do have teachings on it online if you want them. So just go grab those for those who want them. Don't make it more complex than you want it right now. You know, find the happy spot for you of how complex you want the magic workings that you do to be and focus on doing those with full feeling. Your thoughts, which is the images you choose to see, your words, which is the mantras and uh, monlam you recite, monlam means wish path, which is what the words are called, and your feelings as they arise to do this from your understanding of the true meaning of it. This is what makes the magic. Remember, mandala. The outer mandala is not separate from the inner mandala. Your environment creates you as you create it by telling yourself stories about what it is, and it tells itself stories about what you are. And so, two mirrors reflecting themselves forever. This makes it really flexible to magic. You can do anything with it. However, there is such a thing as group karma. And you can get stuck in that too. And you need a bigger group than is stuck in it to shift it. Yes. Did you have a, somebody else have a question? Uh, what are the frequencies? 
Dharmakaya, Sambhogakaya, Namanakaya. Uh, one answer, Tsalung Tigli, all the aspects of refuge are the three secrets in that they are self-secret until you see them. Other questions? Inner, outer, and um, neither. It can also be seen as. Other questions? Well, we have questions from the internet. Give me a couple. Okay. Uh, one person needed a quick reminder of what lies in the eastern direction of the mandala. Vajra sattva, white in color, anger and fear. Into mirror-like wisdom, the absolute clarity of that. Other questions? Another question is, is it possible to use this uh, green Tara Sadhana to subdue unseen beings or problems? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Very good with demons if you're having trouble with them. <laughs> Try some Vajrasattva, too. Mm. Sometimes what you think is an external demon is actually some part of you disagreeing with another part. Oh, so yeah. try both. <laughs> yes? For um, this prejudice to be out, is this for any physical death or also is that for something else like a beating in your life or transition? This would be for physical death. There's better ceremonies for transitions, such as fire pujas, different kinds. No. You feel it from sitting here, knowing who and what you are, with the Vajrasattva on top of your head during the long mantra. Once you have become crystal clear and absorbed that, if you have the long, then it's in your heart, the short mantra. Okay. That's Vajrasattva sadhana. Yeah. If you haven't had the Wong, you stop when you're just crystal. Wong is out on YouTube from Karmapa. I sent out the URLs and we still have them if you want one. Taro Wong is from Garchen Rinpoche and it's also out on YouTube. Feel free. If you want to do, this is a Kriya sadhana, but if you want to get into some of the more advanced sadhanas, Go get the Wong, and then you can do that. There are many. Other questions out there? Uh, yes. Uh, one is, how long do we do the green Tara Sadhana for results to occur? Until results occur. <laughs> Keep at it. And what if the results are not favorable? That's sort of a follow-up question. Keep doing it. <laughs> are we there yet? <laughs> Keep doing it until you, get the fa until you get a favorable result. If you make a habit when your life is suddenly challenged of Yelling Om Jetsuma Droma Lachag Salo and the Tara Green Tara Mantra. It can be really useful. One time my teacher was in Tibet, and you know, you go on top of trucks you ride. He was in the front seat because he's a llama. It was piled with people on top, all his homies. And you know, there's cliffs, and there's cliffs, and the truck started to go over. There was a, the cliff on the outside was crumbling. So the truck starts to lean. 
Rinpoche goes, Om Jetsu Madro Mela Chaksalo, Om Tari Tutari Tari So, Om Tari Tutari Tari So, Om Tari Tutari Tari So. Sitting there in the front seat, just frozen like that, doing the mantra, and the truck is just leaning like this. Everybody leaps off, grabs ropes, gets ropes around the truck, gets strong people on the truck, and they say, okay, Rinpoche, get it. you can get out now. And so still saying the mantra, he gets out, and then he stops saying the mantra, and the ropes go taut. And then they pull the truck back onto the path. Uh, that happens a lot on those roads up uh, in the Himalayas. You really have to watch for it. I mean, you're driving somewhere, and up there comes down. I've driven through landslides where you're ducking boulders as you go through, but it's the only way to get there. Here, life is surprisingly safe <laughs> with guardrails and things. Out there, it's just a lot more noticeable what can kill you. Other questions online? Uh, what kind of offerings are appropriate for green Tara? Pretty stuff. Stuff you like. Foods you like. Don't necessarily use chocolate if there are dogs that come around. It's bad for them. Or foxes or other canyons. However, if that's not what lives in your yard, go ahead. The bugs and birds love it. That won't hurt them. Always unwrap offerings that you're putting outside. For offerings on your altar, whatever you think is nice. The window shopping one is where we go around and look for things we find beautiful and offer them to Tara. It's really simple and it makes a lot of gay one. It's a fun afternoon. If you happen to like window shopping. Next question, if there is one. And then I think I may call oh, it quits. Okay. Uh, there's a question, how to best deploy uh, the Tara mantra during the Kali Yuga? by saying it softly out loud or singing it to the tune of your choice. Remember, there is group karma. You need as big a group as, as is experiencing that reality to shift some of the things like governments. You need like an entire country's population to shift that. And it has to have as enough of a population to match the population that's pushing the other way. So Ukraine by itself can't shift Russia, for example. It's hard to shift group issues. It's much easier to shift something that appears to be you personally, that's bothering you personally, such as your plumbing just gave out in the house that you live in. That's easy. Whereas the entire county is now flooded and under five feet of water is much harder because it's a whole group thing and you'd have to get the whole group together doing Tara to try to drain that. Energies. Karma's a funny little bugger. You have not only your karma created by your mind stream, but karmas your family has given you, ancestral karma. Your ancestors have been through traumas and that leaves karma on you, whether it was the Irish potato fa uh, famine, um, the Jewish Holocaust, the slave trade, the destruction of the Native Americans. These are familial traumas in the history of your family that you will also experience karmas. And then there is cultural karma those of you raised in Western culture will find it difficult to see dragons, whereas those raised in Tibetan culture see them quite regularly because their reality permits their existence. 
when you isolate a Tibetan among Westerners, they can uh, see time change, such as how late the sun goes down in the Northlands. Freaks them out, but they can see it if they're isolated with Westerners. But if you've got a whole Tibetan group moving up there, they'll just figure out the hours got longer. And it's still 7 o'clock when the sun went down, even if it's midnight. <laughs> group karma determines what you are able to see. Your singular karma determines how you will interpret what you will are able to see. Your species karma inter creates what sense organs you are able to perceive with. Sparrows have so many more color cones in their eyes than we do. We see a little brown sparrow, but can you imagine the colors that the sparrow sees? With 300 more, I think it's uh, 300 more cones than us in our retina. Must be beautiful. Whales have a sense called sonar in which they write poetry. It's quite beautiful, but you do not have a sense organ to see it. You can develop one in the dream time. You can go listen in the dream time as a whale. But as a homo sapien, you have homo sapien karma, which limits the range of hearing, the range of colors. You can't see ultraviolet or infrared. Other species can. So that sets a whole pattern of what you can see and what you can't. A lot of uh, beings reflect only light rays and ultraviolet. They are invisible to you. Whereas they're perfectly visible to your cat, who will often be staring at them occasionally. <laughs> Last question. Is it also possible to use uh, green tara for physical in injuries? Yes, particularly good on uh, poisonings and the like. Tibetans are into poisonings. The way we use guns, they use poison in their politics. Oh, and guys, stay out of Tibetan politics. It's as messy as Western politics. Seriously. You don't want to get your foot caught in that. So we are complete for today. Oh, and mentioned the uh, translators. We had uh, Russian, Oh, Georgian, we had a lot of translation Spanish. for this morning. So this at least going three languages. In Russian and Spanish and probably Georgian again. Mm -hmm. So for those of you listening to this in a language other than English, please make an offering to your translators. This is all volunteer. It's never bought. It's never sold. Your kindness will be strongly appreciated by them. And once again, for those of you who wish to merge your practice with one of your our yogis, send me an email to that effect, and we'll talk further about it. Anything else here? There? We're good to go. I think I said everything. Tomorrow, you're 1 o'clock. I'm at 1 o'clock. Leave set up or take it down? Take it back here. Okay. One moment.